try to connect. Good evening and welcome to tonight's planning meeting. I'd like to welcome you all here tonight to our planning meeting, which has been held remotely. We are recording the meeting and the recording will be available on the council's website following the meeting. This meeting is being streamed live on the council's YouTube channel and the link is provided on the council's website. Please note that any comments posted on the chat feed of the council's YouTube channel during the recording of this meeting will not be monitored by the council. All mobile devices should be switched off or set to silent so that the meeting is not interrupted by ringtones. All participants will be muted at the start of the meeting and then will be asked to unmute when being called to speak. The procedure for each item will be that a report will be presented by the planning officer. The planning officer will then read out any written statements received from members of the public on a particular item. I will then invite those members of the public who have already indicated the wishing to speak to do so. Each person will be invited to join the Zoom meeting and will have three minutes to give their views. Once all comments have been given, I will invite members of the committee to discuss the application and reach a decision. Okay, with that, item agenda one, apologies for absence. No apologies. Thank you. Um, declaration of interest. Any councillor showing a declaration of interest, please? No, thank you. Moving forward then, item agenda three, the minutes of the meeting held on the 24th of February and the 2nd of March. I'll take each one of those in turn. So if we could please unmute members so they may have the opportunity to vote on the minutes. The first minutes which we will we'll go through guys will be the 24th of February. So I'm going to come to Councillor McGeorge. Four. And now I'm going to come to Councillor Morris. In favour. I'll come to Councillor Turner. In favour. Come to Councillor Rimmer. In favour. Come to Councillor Kettle. In favour. Thank you. And Councillor Darren. In favour. Thank you. I'll now do the same for the minutes uh, from the meeting held on the 2nd of March. And I will come to Councillor McGeorge. Four. I'll come to Councillor Carol Morris. In favour. Councillor Turner. In favour. Councillor Rimmer. In favour. Councillor Kettle. In favour. And Councillor Darren. In favour. Thank you. And with that, we will move on to our next item agenda, which is um, planning application on Ashton Way, um, item agenda four. If I could hand over to our officers, thank you. It will be Adele, yeah. Thank you. Can you move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Right, uh, thank you, Chair, and good evening, everyone. Um, just before we start, um, I'd like to make members aware of an update sheet which was circulated this afternoon, revising the recommendation in respect of the travel plan monitoring fee and adding a condition in that respect, and I'll refer to that uh, towards the end of my um, presentation. This application relates to the erection of a two-storey youth zone facility, including sports hall, floodlit kick pit, service yard with ancillary single-storey stores, rooftop plant, minibus and blue badge parking and associated landscaping. The applicant is on-site youth zones who have established 14 similar youth zones across the country since 2008. Next slide, please. The application site is outlined in red, comprises part of an existing pay and display car park known as Car Park 11 on Ashton Way in Basildon. Next slide, please. This is the existing site plan. The site is located to the south of Basildon Town Centre and the C2C railway line and Basildon train station. Next slide, please. The site is bounded by Ashton Way to the north. So that's at the top of the aerial photo. The gyratory of Station Way to the east and Cherrydown West to the south. 
The western boundary is adjacent to existing residential properties on Faunas and the Cherry Down Vets. Brick wall marks the eastern side of the site with steps and ramp beyond, which provide access to and from the pedestrian subway beneath Station Way. Next slide, please. This just so shows some uh, site photos um, which were provided by the applicant. Um, so moving top, top row left to right and then bottom row left to right. It's the view from within the site looking north, the car park entrance from Ashton Way, the footpath and subway looking towards Cherry Down West, the new Toucan crossing um, on Ashton Way, the view from Cherry Down West looking north and the view looking south. Next slide, please. In relation to the public consultation process, two letters of objection have been received from local residents on grounds which include matters of reduced parking for commuters, concerns regarding the opening hours of the facility, loss of privacy, the impact of noise, litter, crime and antisocial behaviour, the proposed use not being in the right location and the use not being required due to other existing underfunded or unused youth hubs. So this, this, this shows the proposed site plan. So the proposed youth zone will cater for young people aged 18 to 19 or up to 25 years of age for those with a disability. The facility will offer a wide range of sporting, artistic, cultural, physical and recreational activities for young people, as well as opportunities for personal development and informal education to help raise aspirations and improve prospects. The youth zone is intended to be open whenever schools are closed and would operate 365 days a year. In school term time, the facility is likely to be open Monday to Friday from 3.30, 4 o'clock-ish through to 10 p.m. And the school holidays, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And at weekends, 9 a.m. till 10 p.m. In accordance with Onside's model, an annual membership fee of five pounds would be payable and a nominal session fee of 50 pence per visit. The on-site kitchen will also offer a small range of affordable hot and cold snacks for members. The application falls just outside Basildon Town Centre boundary as designated in the local plan, but falls within the Basildon Town Centre generation strategy area. The adopted local plan makes no reference to how proposals for recreational facilities will be received and therefore the proposed use is unaffected by policy designations made within the adopted local plan. The national planning policy framework is a material consideration in the determination of the application and significant weight should be afforded to its policies. Paragraph 11 of the National Planning Policy Framework states that decisions should apply a presumption in favour of sustainable development. The National Planning Policy Framework promotes the creation of healthy and safe communities and supports the provision of shared spaces and community facilities and the delivery of local strategies to improve health, social and cultural well-being for all sections of the community. The proposed use would help to deliver these positive benefits to young people in the borough. Full weighting cannot be afforded to policies within the Council's emerging local plan as it is still to undergo its examination in public by an independent inspector. However, policy HC3 of the emerging local plan identifies that the Council will work with the County Council and other education and skills development providers to provide new facilities which seek to improve the quality and choice of education and learning opportunities in the borough, sorry. The proposed youth zone is considered to complement existing community facilities in the borough and will also provide new opportunities, activities and learning spaces. Within the Basildon Town Centre Regeneration Strategy, it was identified that as part of a modal shift towards sustainable transport, that surplus car parking provision existed within the wider town centre area, including the car park on the application site. Accordingly, the principle of redevelopment of part of car park 11 would not result in an undersupply of parking in the area and therefore would not conflict with policy T9 of the emerging local plan. The principle of the proposed youth zone facility is supported by the National Planning Policy Framework and adopted an emerging local plan policies and meets the aspirations of the Basildon Town Centre Regeneration Strategy. 
So turning now to the proposed site plan, which is uh, shown on the screen. Um, the proposed youth zone building is located to the northern part of the site. Um, it's where, where the words youth zone are in the middle. So you can see that the, the gray box is the main part of the building. Um, the building is low rise in height and incorporates a total of 2,324 square meters of floor space across ground and first floor levels. Further to the north, the existing car park access from Ashton Way near the junction with Station Way is to be altered to provide a safe drop-off pickup zone for those attending the facility with a direct path leading to the youth zone entrance. A key design requirement of the proposal was that there was only one entrance to the building and facilities and that this is supervised and controlled at all times. The layout has been designed so that visitors enter the building via a new plaza located at the front of the site near the junction of Ashton Way and Station Way. And this creates a legible and well-designed single access point to the building. An area of external amenity space is proposed adjacent to the southern elevation of the youth zone building and alongside a proposed floodlit external kick pitch. So um, you can see the gray box below the main uh, youth zone building and then uh, further to the south, um, the green area, which is labeled as a kick pitch. To the western and northern boundaries, a soft landscape buffer zone is incorporated along with retained existing trees to the boundary. Adjacent to the parking area, some landscape mounding is also proposed. Further to the south and on-site area, so, sorry, service area is proposed, which utilizes an existing car park exit onto Cherry Down West. The service area provides sufficient space for vehicle turning and also accommodates one on-site blue badge parking space and one minibus parking space, along with adjacent external stores, including the refuse and recycling store. Next slide, please. This indicates the proposed boundary treatments, which range from um, 2.4 metres high um, along the boundary to the Cherry Down Bets and um, to the southern boundary um, around the kick pitch and the amenity area for four metre high um, fencing, well mesh fencing is proposed and facing out onto Station Way, um, it will include um, signage along the side of the um, kick pitch fencing. Um, the, to the western side, um, the existing boundary treatment to the residential properties will be retained um, and then there will be the line of trees and then a further 2.4 metre perimeter fence um, is also proposed. Next slide please. So the proposal will result in the removal of 24 semi-mature to mature trees across the site, comprising individual trees and groups of trees, as well as existing introduced shrub and hedgerow. Replacement new trees and hedgerow planting is proposed. Um, there are 20 new trees proposed um, and 65 metres of hedgerow planting as well as an increased amount of soft landscape areas um, in the form of um, uh, so meadow, meadow planting and, um, and, and green planting towards the front of the site. So this plan um, shows the retained trees um, where they've all got sort of T's adjacent to them, the, the colored, colored in circles. The um, circles on the eastern boundary um, is an indicative um, layout for the proposed trees and there's also some additional trees shown on the northern boundary as well. Um, a soft landscaping condition is proposed to secure a detailed scheme of landscaping for the site and um, along with aftercare planting, uh, sorry an aftercare planting maintenance plan. Next slide please. This shows the proposed ground floor layout. Um, so the, green, the large green area on the left-hand side shows the proposed sports hall. The smaller green area to the side of that is a climbing wall. 
um, the pink pink uh, rooms shown around the outside of the, the building. Um, they are meeting rooms and classroom spaces. Uh, to the top, the grey area adjacent to the sports pitch is the kitchen and servery. Um, the turquoise areas um, is the reception area. Um, and uh, to the bottom of the diagram, the grey areas indicate the um, changing rooms and uh, WCs and plant room and adjacent to that, a lift um, access and stairwell as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is the proposed first floor plan. Uh, the large green area on the left-hand side is um, obviously looking down onto the um, double height sports hall. The other green area on the right hand side is a super fitness suite, um, which will uh, combine martial arts, boxing and gym equipment into one room. Uh, the pink rooms are, are generally meeting rooms and classroom spaces, as well as a, a staff kitchen. Uh, the turquoise area to the bottom of the screen is the um, staff office and management office as well. Um, and adjacent to the super fitness area is additional WCs. Next slide, please. Um, this is just showing the proposed roof plan um, on the left-hand side that is showing um, the proposed photovoltaic panels um, and some wind catches. And on the, the right-hand side, it's showing some roof lights. Next slide, please. Um, just before I move on, just the building has been designed and be operated following the principle of, of inclusivity. This includes considering the needs of disabled users, including people with sensory, cognitive and mobility impairments, including wheelchair users. Okay, so this, this um, slide shows the proposed elevations. Um, top, top is the northern elevation. Uh, Second down is the eastern elevation, the western elevation, and then at the bottom is the southern elevation of the building. The tallest um, element of the building is 11.2 meters high, and that is the, um, the, the top of the uh, climbing wall. Uh, the proposed sports hall, which is um, on the top diagram, is on the right-hand side. That's 10.3 meters high and the main building is 9.2 meters high, sorry, 9.25 meters high. So the pro proposed front elevation of the use zone building at first floor level projects over the ground floor on V-shaped columns, which are an interpretation of the Pilates of the grade two listed Brook House in Basildon Town Center. Large areas of glazing on the front elevation provide good natural light into the development and offer glimpses of activity in the building from the outside. The covered ground floor area support, supported by the Pilates will provide shelter and a waiting area for the users of the facility. The proposed elevation or treatment of the building is designed to suit the scale of each room and activity contained within. At lower levels, this comprises slots of curtain wall glazing between vertical stacked buff brickwork. A high level window wraps around the building providing natural light within whilst maintaining protection for the young people inside on public facing areas. At high level on the main building, gray rock panel, mineral wool cladding panels are proposed and provide a backdrop for, for punched windows of differing sizes, which add a playful and exciting tone to the elevation with pops of color used as a surround. On the southern elevation, where the main building changes to the sports hall element, a large pattern window is proposed. This window is an interpretation of the lost tiled artwork from Key House in Basildon Town Centre. The design of the sports hall elevations have gone through a rigorous process to come to the proposed design, which helps to break down the volume by using materials and carefully considered fenestration. Fibre cement cladding panels are proposed at angles on the sports hall to create a pleated facade to reference the shape of the bay windows on Brook House. A darker tone is used at lower level with a lighter color higher up. 
The change in tone and pleat will help to break down the massing with variation in color and shadows throughout the day. Overall, the proposal is considered to be of a high quality design and appearance, which strongly references the architectural and design history of the new town. And the proposed, proposed building heights and site layout are considered to be appropriate given the nature of the proposed development and the building sufficiently set back from adjacent neighboring properties to avoid any significant harm. Next slide, please. This is just showing the material palette. So the buff brickwork, the um, rock panel cladding um, is the gray area in, gray in the middle and the fiber cement cladding for the sports hall on the right hand side. Uh, curtain wall glazing at the bottom and just showing aluminium colored window surrounds in the middle at the bottom. Next slide, please. So this is the uh, proposed elevation of the building, looking at the front with the um, pilotes, the yellow pilotes underneath. Um, and next slide, please. And this is the elevation looking from Station Way. You can see in the middle on the, the side elevation, the, um, the artwork that I referred to, uh, which, reference the, which, which references um, Key House. Next slide, please. Oh, thank you. Um, so this, this site, site is um, considered to be highly sustainable in terms of transport. Um, it's easily accessible on foot or cycle from surrounding development, Basildon Town Centre and the bus and train stations. So the, um, the blue star in the middle of this diagram is the, the site. Uh, the orange dots um, either side of that uh, are bus stops. Um, the yellow dot above it is a is the location of the train station, and the red dot above that is the location of the desert and bus station. New Toucan crossings have recently been installed on Ashton Way near the junction with Station Way, further improving pedestrian access to the site from the town centre and stations. The existing vehicular access to the site via a slip road from Ashton Way is to remain as well as the existing vehicular access onto Ashton Way. Due to the scheme's very nature, young people visiting the facility are unlikely to be, to be either eligible by age to drive to the facility or have access to a car to do so. Accordingly, no on-site car parking is proposed with the exception of one blue badge car parking space and one minibus parking space located within the proposed servicing area. By way of example, the travel survey data from the Blackburn East Zone facility confirms that only 16% of visitors to that youth zone facility are driven to the facility, while 84% walk, cycle, or use public transport zone would follow this trend. Next slide, please. So this is just a zoom in um, on the drop-off bay um, at, at the corner of Ashton Way. So a four bay youth zone drop-off pickup area is proposed on the existing vehicular access slip road to car park 11. The positioning of the proposed drop-off pickup bays will not interfere with the free flow of traffic on the surrounding highway network. A traffic regulations order will be agreed with Essex County Council Highway Authority to manage the use of the drop-off pickup bays and to avoid misuse. The introduction of a robust travel plan to, to be secured by condition will encourage both visitors and staff working at the facility to travel by sustainable modes of transport. A total of 16 visitor cycle spaces will be provided at the front of the site adjacent to the reception area where they can be overlooked. A further eight cycle parking spaces will be provided for staff use within the site. 
Next slide, please. The development will be serviced from Cherry Down West with a servicing with a servicing area providing appropriate space for deliveries and refuse collection. The Essex County Council Highway Authority has raised no objections to the proposed development subject to, con to conditions which are to be secured. Having regard to paragraph 109 of the National Planning Policy Framework, the proposal would not result in an unacceptable impact on highway safety and the residual cumulative cumulative um, impacts on the road network will not be severe. Accordingly, the proposed development is considered to be acceptable on transport and highway grounds. Next slide, please. So this is just taking us back to the proposed site plan. As set out at section 5.9 of the committee report, the proposed development by reason of its design and siting and separation from surrounding residential development is not anticipated to result in any significant impacts on neighboring occupiers with respect to matters of daylight, sunlight and overshadowing, overlooking, loss of outlook, noise and general lighting and flood lighting. The external lighting strategy for the development which has been agreed by the environmental health team and is to be secured by condition proposes that the flood lighting for the kick pitch would be photo cell controlled to only come on when natural light levels fall below a sufficient level. The flood lighting will be manually controlled to turn it off when the kick pitch is not in use, and it would be automatically turned off between the hours of 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. Conditions are also proposed to secure the proposed noise mitigation measures set out in the noise assessment and an operational management strategy for the youth zone. During the application process, the applicant and officers met with the Essex Police Designing Out Crime Officer to discuss the proposal and following positive discussions, this has resulted in some revisions to the proposal in terms of layout and design to improve crime prevention measures. Furthermore, conditions will secure a, secure a secured by design silver award for the development, as well as an operational management plan. These are considered to be robust measures to ensure a safe and secure development and to alleviate any concerns around potential nuisance or antisocial behavior. The proposed development would achieve a 21% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions beyond Part L of the building regulations 2013 through a combination of building passive measures, photovoltaics and decentralized energy. This meets the 21, sorry, this meets the 20% requirement in policy CC1 of the emerging local plan. The proposed development would also achieve a building research establishment environmental assessment method or BRIAM rating of very good. The submitted design and access statement includes a fire strategy statement, which is being developed in early consultation with a fire engineering consultant. This highlights that the proposed development has been developed with fire safety in mind from day one. The Essex Fire and Rescue Service has raised no objection to proposed development on fire safety grounds. In order to satisfy officers that robust consideration of fire safety matters takes place at the detailed design stage, a planning condition is proposed to secure the requirement for a detailed fire statement for the development to be submitted for approval. Members should note, however, that fire safety is a matter which requires formal building regulations approval. So to conclude, the proposed development would provide a high quality youth zone facility offering a wide range of activities for young people in the borough. The site is in a sustainable location within the easy walking cycling distance of Basildon Town Centre, surrounding communities, existing bus routes and the train station. The proposed youth zone would make an important contribution to the health, well-being and employment prospects of young people in the local community by providing a safe and inspiring place to spend time away from home and school. The application represents sustainable development in accordance with the adopted local plan, the emerging local plan, and the national planning policy framework. The proposal also reflects the aspirations of the Basildon Town Centre regeneration strategy. So just referencing the update sheet that was sent this afternoon, um, a new planning condition is proposed, condition 31, um, that states that prior to, so the, the, the reasoning behind this is the workplace travel plan monitoring fee of £6,000 
um, which is currently proposed in the committee report to be secured by a section 106 unilateral undertaking prior to the grant of any planning permission will still be secured by way of a section 106, but the section 106 will be entered into with the applicant prior to commencement of development once the applicant has secured a legal interest in the site. The entering into of the section 106 will be secured by way of a planning condition. The new planning condition, condition 31 reads, prior to commencement of development, a section 106 planning obligation shall be entered into in order to secure the payment of a workplace travel plan monitoring fee, reason to secure a workplace travel monitoring fee. Sorry, workplace travel plan monitoring fee. So the recommendation um, on pages 46 and 74 of the committee report is revised to read, is recommended that the, the committee resolves that planning application number 2001657 full be granted planning permission subject to the conditions set out at the end of this report and additional condition 31 bracket with any amendments that might be necessary up to the issue of the decision notice. Thank you. Thank you, Adele, for that comprehensive report. Um, I don't believe we have any statements to be read out. We're therefore going to go to members of the public wishing to speak. Um, we have a Mr. Adam Poynier, who's the applicant from um, Onside Youth Zone, I believe, in the waiting room. Thank you. Um, yeah, you will have three minutes to speak. Thank you. Could you unmute him, please? Uh, good evening, Chair and members of the committee. Uh, on side, are very pleased to submit our application for the new Basildon Youth Zone. It will be one of our 14 youth zones in our national network of facilities specifically designed for young people. Mrs Lawrence has provided a fantastic summary of the technical details for our application, so I don't intend to repeat those now, but I do wish to quickly address a number of issues that I've been made aware of as part of the consultation process. There are understandably concerns about antisocial behaviour and crime, but our experience shows that this is ill-founded. Far from serving as a magnet of antisocial behaviour and crime, existing youth zones have actually contributed to significantly decreasing such issues, and the police report to us the positive effects of partnership working resulting in the decrease of this type of activity of up to 77% in some areas. In regards to noise, youth zones are de designed in recognition of results of acoustic analysis based on the use of our outdoor kick pitches and play areas. These are with, within acceptable noise guidelines and recommendations and below the council's own noise limits. Often the staff team working with young people will be mindful of the residents and, um, deal, and help them be respectful in the neighborhood, uh, particularly when they're leaving the youth zone uh, after a session ends. It's, it's very important to us that. Um, youth zones strive to be good neighbours. Being po positive members of the community is something that we are passionate about and it's part of our DNA. Um, we do have examples where residents have been opposed to our uh, youth zones in its early development stages, but very quickly they become strong supporters of what we do and even become volunteers in the, in the youth zones. Um, Basildon Youth Zone will be its own independent charity led by a youth zone with a fantastic team of dedicated staff or with specialist skills in which to support youth, uh, young people. The youth zone will have a private sector-led board of trustees who will provide governance and rigour in the management of the youth zone and who will ensure that best practice is followed to ensure the highest standards of operation and leadership is maintained at all times. There are huge social impact benefits of the project, uh, providing benefit for young people, the wider Basildon community, local businesses and other like-minded partners as well. Basildon Youth Zone will give young people a safe place to go to have fun and grow. It will help young people lead healthier, happier lives and enable young people to be better uh, placed to face life's challenges. It will help young people to raise their aspirations and go on to achieve in education and employment and ultimately will help to strengthen communities by supporting young people uh, to be empowered, active and caring citizens. Finally, I'd respectfully argue that uh, this is an opportunity to approve a fantastic 21st century facility that will help many generations of young people and will in the years to come be a great asset in the town and something everyone will rightly be proud of. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you. With that, I will come to uh, members of our committee. Do I have a councillor, any councillors wishing to speak at this time? I think I've got Councillor Rimmer up first. Could you unmute Councillor Rimmer, please? Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just going to look at this on sort of planning grounds and my concerns in terms of planning matters. Um, and that is really, um, we talk about sustainable transport with this development and people being able, young people being able to access it. There are only actually four drop-off points uh, for vehicles. There's only 16 cycle racks uh, for cycling. And actually, how young people and kids are going to be able to navigate their way there safely is of grave concern to me. And I don't really think that the developer has actually seriously taken this on board, I'm afraid to say. I think it, these problems are surmountable, I think, in, and they need to be surmounted. Um, it's of grave concern. I, we've read recently in the paper that they're talking about busing people in from South End. I think the leader of the council said that this was what was going to happen. Um, the head of planning looked surprised by that, but it was in the echo. And the other aspect to that is obviously, we've been told tonight, there's only actually one parking bay for a minibus. So we were actually thinking about the conditions of the driver and any sort of rest period that the drivers might need, that's not really taken into account by all these minibuses that are going to be coming into the youth centre from out of the borough. I, I, I do think that um, just on these terms, um, it, it's very questionable, but I'm remaining open-minded and want to hear what other members have to say and what officers have to say. I do feel that there must be some way of assuaging these concerns about lack of cycling facilities, uh, lack of uh, drop-off points, uh, lack of consideration in respect, uh, respect to the gyratory system and the taxi rank and the commuters there, the loss of parking in respect of those commuting uh, to uh other places using that car park that's now going to be lost for this facility and a lot of car parking generally being lost in the borough so i've got some concerns there um which i think you know it's worth looking at and seeing if there's any way to address them thank you thank you councillor rimmer do i have any other councillors indicating Um, Councillor Morris would be next. Thank you. Could we meet Councillor Morris? Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, it's a shame that you weren't able to attend the briefing we had on Thursday because we were told that this car park is leased by Basildon Borough Council They're on a long-term lease. But in actual, in the report, it actually says it's owned by Basildon Council. Um, I wonder if I can just have some clarity on that one, please. Um, it is owned by BTCM. It's leased to the council. OK. Well, that's not the only misleading thing about this, this agenda and application. Page um, 44, number 1.13, states that um, you're going to remove 25 to 30 semi-mature to mature trees. Uh, this There's an which which have got some of which have got trip tpos on them the arbicultural report says that this is okay because they're low quality but since when have we put tpos on low quality trees most of the executive summary appears to be opinion without any facts to back it up for instance 1.14 which is also on uh, which is on page 45 says Overall, the proposal will bring a much stronger green element to the site than the current situation, but doesn't explain how. And yet it follows on from the one that tells us that you're going to cut down the trees. In the um, background section, point two point three point number 2.3.7 on page 48, 
we're told that 5,000 young people are anticipated to join the youth zone within 12 months. This is based upon data from four other youth zones between the years of uh, 2017 and 2019. Yet I understand that only 270 young people have actually responded to the survey about the youth zone. And there's no mention of anything, uh, any evidence of anything in Basildon where two previous similar projects, the Round Acre and the Youth Advisory Centre both failed. In the um, planning policy section, 5.1.6 on page 58 refers to section eight of the NPPF, which we're told says, promoting social interaction, including opportunities for meetings between people who may not otherwise meet. But we're not told that it goes on to say, for example, through mixed use development, strong neighborhood centers, street layouts, that allow for easy pedestrian and cycle connections within and between neighborhoods and street frontages. So it's actually referring to um, housing, not uh, buildings such as this. 5.18, which is on the same page, refers to paragraph uh, 92 of section eight of the MPPF. Uh, it states, supports the provision of shared spaces and common facilities. Well, there's several parts that follow on from that. And part C says to guard against the unnecessary loss of valued facilities and services, particularly where this would reduce the, commu the community's ability to meet its day-to-day -day needs. Now, bearing in mind that this site is a medium to long stay car park right next to the station, this application appears to go against part to, uh, C. 5.21 mentions section 12 of the MPPF. And we are told, it says, supports the achievement of well-designed places, requiring the design of developments to add to the overall quality of an area across the lifetime of a development being visually attractive. What it actually say, states is, good design is a key aspect of sustainable development creates better places in which to live and work and helps make development acceptable to communities. Being clear about design expectations and how these will be tested is essential for achieving this. So too is effective engagement between applicants, communities, local planning authorities and other interests throughout the process. Now, the people who are likely to have the most interest in this youth zone are all those groups who already provide youth services for, for uh, youth, youths throughout the borough, yet none of them has been consulted. This is not the first car park in the borough to be built upon. In fact, 700 parking spaces were lost between 2012 and 2017. And Including this one, there's another 650 that are set to go. Also since 2012, many more flats have been created. Some from office blocks, such as Trafford House and Acorn House, and they have not had any extra parking being provided for them. And there's also been new flats built. Then, two, four weeks ago, nearly 500 flats were approved with just 69 parking spaces provided. The commuters whose car park this is will have to find alternative parking and that is likely to be on residential streets because all the remaining spaces in town will be filled by the residents of all these flats. This development does not have any parking just four drop-off spaces. At busy times, such as at the 8 a.m. such as at 8 a.m. during school holidays, when parents will be dropping off their children on their way to work, there will be a queue for these four spaces, which is likely to back up onto the station way gyratory oh. system. This will probably apply at pickup times as well. So, you know, there are an awful lot of things that do not seem to be um, adding up with this application. 
Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Morris. I'm just going to hand over um, to Mrs Lyons so she can address some of those issues. Thank you. Um, Councillor Morris, the, um, the beginning part of the report is a summary of, of what is in the report. So, of course, you can take elements of that, that out and, and they're, they're, they're all set out for there. Your comments with regard to the MPPF, I mean, they're your comments and, and you're quite within your rights to make comments about, the, um, about what the MPPF says. In terms of the highways, we've had no objection from the, the Highway Authority. And in terms of your concerns with regard to the, um, the stacking up of cars entering um, the drop-off points, that's the point that um, I think Adele made quite, um, she did actually go into it in, in, quite, in quite detail because that's the reason why it's actually in, in that spot. So the, the um, parents will then continue into the car park and be able to turn around and come back round again. So you're not gonna end up with cars stacking up to get to get to that point um with regards to the lot i mean i would i think um adele made a, a, a point with regards to the the um the loss of the car park against um the um the additional um benefits of the um the the community asset that we're we're looking to replace as part of that and i think there's a balance being made be between the the impact of loss of the car parking um, in terms of that being a community asset against a community asset of a new of a new youth stroke um, wider community building that we're producing here. So therefore, I think it does meet the requirements of the MPPF in terms of, 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 of that point. And design, you can comment on designers, uh, you know, design is design. Um, the building is a functional building that um, that supports this use. It's it's functioning in terms of the way it's set out and it's functioning the way it sits in, in the um, in the street scene. We did spend a lot of time um, with the with the um, the applicant going over the design, and it's been through quite a rigorous um, pre-application uh, pre process to get it to the current state that it's in. Um, so, therefore, I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go over the points of the MPPF because we can all sit and argue about what the paragraph of the MPPF says. But I think that we've um, the assessment that was made by the planner, I think, is and um, and and myself in terms of the, the, the final report um, makes a very clear assessment of the, um, the relevant policies that we have to look into and also the relevant um, parts of the MPPF that need to be considered as part of that development decision-making process. So therefore, I, you know, you can take what you want from the report, but that's, I think that the report is, is, is very solid. In terms of the comments that Councillor Rimmer made with regard to um, additional car parking. Um, Councillor Rimmer, I've just had a look at that condition. Um, the, there, is an, there is an option for that condition that I think that we could, so um, condition 21 deals with cycle parking. And I think there is a condition uh, we could add to that condition if, if, if um, we could agree the wording with, um, with, the, develop, with the applicant around a, um, a cycle management plan that we would then would be submitted on six months of the operation of the building, which would then look at the additional 16 places that the actual um, the applicant has said that could be brought into into play if they're needed. So that would then deal with that issue that you've raised in terms of sustainable transport. So we could look at an additional addendum to add a um, additional condition to um, power, um, to condition 21 that would look at that. And I think that may then deal with the, your issues of is 16 car, um, cycle places enough. Um, in terms of the general discussions around around highways, I think the, the Highway Authority has got no objection, so I can't go into that any further. I think that's dealt with the matters. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lyons. Um, I'm going to let Carol come back. If you want to come back, Carol, could you unmute yeah, can Councillor Murray? Could, can I just ask Mrs. Lyons, um, she didn't deal with the consultation issue. The um, consultation is set out in the, um, we consulted with the, um, as in terms of our community, uh, same community involvement, um, which is set out and was adopted by the council, and we consulted with local residents. That um, consultation was very wide and actually it occurred on two occasions because there was an a, um, amendment to the application. Um, and we consulted with 764 residents um, and also we put up relevant site notices. The consultation over the youth zone and on site would be a matter for the applicants to deal with, and and that's obviously was was dealt with. The note in the report with regard to the five that potential five thousand um, people joining the um, the youth youth zone, um, again that is from the applicant's position. Um, as far as we're aware, the the um, on site and and alongside the council as the applicants undertook a a survey. 
survey of uh, separate to the planning process, and that was that was run separately. The and that was dealt with, and the outcomes of that have dealt with the the development we've got in front of us, and also the knowledge of on side as the applicants would be aware of what this age group normally requires in terms of their needs to meet a good youth stroke community centre for the needs of that age of, of those quite wide age group. Um, yeah, I'll come to Bernie. It's yeah, few little problems here. I'll come to Bernie first, and then to uh, Mel. Thank. Hmm. Uh, thank you. Um, really, uh, well, the first part really is sort of in line with which councillor Rimmer actually started, which comes back to how people are going to get there. I, I tend to feel that the zoo zone youth zone people are probably right. 84% of the people going there may well walk and cycle there. That leaves all the parishes out in the cold. Um, so unless your plan is good to actively run minibuses backwards and forwards to the parishes, um, then I do not see how. I mean, most of the parishes do not have a bus after five or six o'clock at night. And the train, well, unless you, the, the Hogwarts Express are do as you're going to get because they just don't exist. And, and even if you went to somewhere around our area and went to Pitsy, no one in their right mind is going to let a child walk through Pitsy at night. It's just not unless you really don't like them. So that is a problem. And if you solve that by supplying minibuses, are they going to park in the car park and pay the appropriate fees? Because there's obviously nowhere else for them to park. And as was then pointed out, are the drivers going to park and go somewhere else? Because... There are no facilities for the drivers. So, so, so that whole cycle needs to be looked at. Of, there are lots of ways of resolving it, but to, to, to completely close the circle is going to take a little bit of work. Um, I noticed they covered quickly antisocial behaviour. Um, and, and he's absolutely right. If, if they talk to the lads there, the lads there aren't going to really want to destroy the place that they they've, would very quickly come to love. But if anyone who's worked in the parish areas will know, um, when we develop our parks, they get destroyed by people from other areas. People from Greys will come through to destroy a place in, in Bitsy. It's, it's, the, the trouble comes from outside. Now, I know the police would probably be looking for this to some extent, and to actually destroy anything within the facility itself is unlikely. But it will attract people from outside, and that is a problem that has to be recognised. It will become a target by the people that are not using it, other than those that are. Um, I did notice that you mentioned um, hot snacks and cold snacks. I, I thought it said in the document there was going to be hot meals, um, which I'm not sure where the comparison is there, but I thought I think there is one. Um, um, really... I think that's pretty much it. The, the only other thing I would say, and that is picking up and dropping off are two completely different things. Lots of schools have found ways of creating drop-off points. Um, Pick-up points are different because the, the children you have to wait for, but if they can wait for them in the car park, then maybe that is slightly different. But basically, if you've got four bays with people waiting for their children to arrive, you, you've run out of room within the first 10 seconds. So maybe as uh, Councillor Brown or, or uh, Christine Lyons has intimated that they can actually maybe wait in the car park and pick up when they're announced. I'm not quite sure. But again, I think that really needs a definite plan put in place to make sure that that systems work without children or youngsters getting put in danger because it, it actually says that children will not be allowed to leave the building unaccompanied young children will not leave the, it's the same as a school you're not allowed to leave a school unless your 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 parent is there which means the adult parents are picking up have actually got to park somewhere to then go and collect their child 
which is a little bit different to just dropping them off and letting them run in and turning around. So that they are my advice. The, the, I think the details of these really have not been honed out as to the point that they need to be. Thank you very much. Um, thanks. I'm just going to hand back over to um, Christine Lyons who can explain to you that the majority of your points there are not planning issues, but in fact operational. But I'll pass you over to Mrs Lyons. Thank you. Um, Councillor Foster, I mean, they're, 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 all, they're all points. Um, they're all operational matters. Um, we have at page 82 of the report, there is a condition um, that sets out a requirement for the youth um, zone operational management plan. So those matters um, will be picked up in that. So th th they will be rolled in, in into that process. And that will include um, the parking, the sort of the parking pickup management plan, which, you know, you're, 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 you're quite right. I mean, it, it, people um, especially when you're dealing, you're dealing with quite a wide age group here so your older children or older young adults it's not a problem for them but when you're dealing with the young the younger age group you want to make sure that there's a safe and an operational plan for pick up of those condition 24 will pick will deal with that completely and obviously um, the youth zone have got those in place for their current youth zones so I think they are well aware of how to deal with that through this process so I feel quite confident that, that we'll get a good um, a good plan from them with that and that will obviously go in we'll we'll make sure that we um, that we review that with the, with our colleagues um, in um, sort of safeguarding and the police as well to make sure that that meets all, the, all their requirements. Thank you. I'm now going to come to Councillor McGeorge. Yep, am I muted? Yep. <laughs> um, this isn't the developer's first rodeo. Did I hear them say that they've got 14 other youth zones? They know what they're doing. They know what they're looking at. This is a fantastic opportunity for our borough, for our youth to have somewhere to go rather than sitting around the parks rather than destroying the things like Bernie was saying. They're going to have somewhere to go. They're going to have something to do. This is amazing. They're going to be set up with professional places, professional people. Why would anyone want to turn down this opportunity for our borough? It's crazy. I don't understand. Thank you, Councillor McGeorge. Um, any councillor that's not spoken thus far that wishes to do so? Can I just check, Councillor Turner, did you wish to speak? No, I um, just want to check, Councillor Kettle. Sorry, did you um, want... sorry. Oh, sorry, <laughs> trying, sorry, Phil. Trying to get, yeah, trying... Trying to get yeah, on mute. I, look, I, I mean, I think we've got to divorce two things here. This is a priority for the the politicians on the administration, the Labour-led coalition. That vote's going to go through tonight because that's their mainstream. But let, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, the report is an absolute disgrace. No doubt, no doubt about it. We know it is. Um, I, I'm, I'm absolutely ashamed of the reports that come to this committee where they're so biased, they're so blatantly unbalanced. And, um, and we don't do any justice. I, I think, listening to uh, Councillor McGeorge, and she's got a fair point. We need to do more for the, for the youth of this borough. Is it served best in this way? Well, maybe a dedicated facility is perhaps perhaps a good way to think about it. So I'll give you that. Is this a good place for it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You can't have two policies where you're trying to desperately regenerate the town. And then you, you plonk this on a prime piece of real estate. You don't call it the town centre. You call it on the fringes. It's not on the fringes. It's absolutely in the middle of the town centre. So. I don't know. I think some fair points have been made about why this application shouldn't go ahead. Um, it will go ahead. You'll vote it through tonight. Um, if we do get in in May, I think we'll have to take another view on it. But that's for another day. But sure as sure as enough, I'm not going to vote for that tonight. It's nothing against being against youth services. We've got enough of those coming through from county and other independent suppliers. You shake your head, but you have. You know, and, and you've got this thing against county, but actually county, county provide a number of services, as do the voluntary sector. Why you want to put it here? And, and when I look at this application, it reminds me of uh, Markham's Chase. That was another thing that Labour built. And when it was fully utilised, it was bringing in a revenue of about £12. 
So, you know, time will tell. I, I don't like the report. I, I've said this on many occasions. I think the report, when you read verbatim, basically a list of, it's, it's like a salesman's job. You shouldn't be doing that. Officers should be given a balanced report and we never get a balanced report. Um, and I think fair dues to the, the professionals, um, Aidan, I think, yeah, you're right, uh, Councillor McGeorge. These guys are professional, they've done it before. I hope to God they can do it for Basildon. Um, I think the risks are there. None of us would be, go against um, services for the, for the youth in our borough, but I think the risks are there. Um, I hope, as it will go through, we can really make a go of this. My fear is we won't. We'll end up closing it and probably turning it into um, more flats with no parking. But um, thanks very much for the opportunity to tell you my views. Thank you, Councillor Turner. Um, Councillor Kettle, we've not heard from you this evening. Is Did you want to come in at this point? Mute, you should be able to come in now. Thank you. Can you hear me? All oh, right. Just the every problems and the, the head hurts as well. So, yeah, basically listening to the comments from the colleagues on the council, um, the youth zone is a good idea because it will get the youngsters off the streets and um, into jobs and responsibilities. Um, but the, how can I put this? Um, there needs to be conditions put on with the parking and the safety of the children, getting them to there, getting them back, make sure there's ample parking so they don't park in the um, side roads. So um, that will have to be dealt with and also the safety of the youngsters. I'm all for getting them off the streets and sending them down that road now. I had one and she is now left a very bad situation and now she's leading a normal life and she's getting a career for herself in the social, not social media, health and social care, that's it, and that. So, yeah, the youth zone is a good idea, but it needs to be looked into the safety, the parking and everything else. But most of the councillors have um, answered the questions that I sort of had with that, not the youth zone. I'm for the youth zone. Uh, thank you, Councillor Kettle. Councillor Rimber, do you still wish to come back? You may do so. Could you unmute Councillor Rimmer, please? Uh, thank you. Um, I noticed the chair didn't raise the issue of sticking to planning matters with Councillor McGeorge, but let's leave that aside. Uh, we will go on to back to the cycling um, and the condition that was suggested. I, it would be good if we just started from the assumption and actually encourage these young children to cycle and actually started with 32 cycling places. And, and, and then look to the cycle management scheme. And then, because I, I can't see any argument for not doing so, uh, personally, from, from what has been presented tonight. And if we are serious about a commitment to cycling, I think that should be done. I, I also take a small exception, and I've said this before in the technical meeting as well, to this idea that most of the use of, that the users of the site will not be driving uh, because obviously the age goes up, doesn't it, to 24 year olds. And so there, there could be a proportion that actually do drive a car. Um, and so it's just, I think that should have been taken into account. And what is clear, and a lot of young people have said this in Essex of that sort of age, but actually driving a car is sometimes cheaper than the public transport. Uh, and so if they have this vehicle and they can take themselves and their friends to there, maybe there should have been some consideration or some provision for that, because that would have been a way of them actually safely getting there and back. Um, so I, I, I don't, 
I, I just think we have to be a bit broader minded and and I understand and in this planning committee there's been a bit of an anti-car agenda that's come about um, and I've been always pushing um, and uh, planning have always looked at favorably electric charge charging points for cars and this electrification of um, vehicles is happening apace and by 2035 we're going to have a largely carbon neutral electricity network um, so what's the problem <laughs> so <laughs> if by 2040 we're getting rid of the combustion engine we should actually be thinking a bit more future focused and actually thinking not to be so anti-car um, and actually driving in itself is going to be a skill that you, young people who are going to be using this youth center would actually find quite valuable so sustainable transport in terms of the bicycles for sure but um and and, and get it up to 32 but i, I am concerned about this anti-car culture that we've got going on here as well thank you craig what I'd say it's not an anti-car culture. What we're saying is what is required according to planning legislation as laid out by our central government. And as laid out by our central government, this meets those regulations. Um, Bernie, I can see your hands up. Did you want to come back? Yeah, thank you. Um, I, 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 basically, I, I still feel that the parishes out, outside of the edges could still suffer from this but if you look at it logically if you're going to start with to build a facility like this and i've been to their presentations that they've put forward and they are a very uh the the, the group is uh managed very well um and the logical place to start would be somewhere like the town center which is the center of the circle um and uh, as uh councillor mcgeorge said um they have a lot of experience um m most of the ones they have built actually are better connected to the areas than what we are as soon as you move out of basildon you intrinsically develop gaps and low transport areas a lot of the places they're built actually have better transport facilities existing before they move in so i still think that problem exists but yeah i would still say if you're going to build one and it is a magnificent facility it's the start it could be or should be the start whether you can hub out from there is debatable but maybe to build a ricky or which one of the larger areas i doubt you'll come our way or my way as it is um the, um and th there was a point made that um, there have been numerous other attempts over the years unfortunately most of them have fallen to the wall um but i would suggest if this one manages to break even or it'll earn 12 pound a year above its running costs um then eventually it will succeed it's as simple as that, you know, I mean, if they're not losing money and they're willing to stick with it, you will end up with a good facility. Um, that, that's really it. But I, I, I think it's a great idea and I absolutely support it. I'm just not sure it's going to actually help my particular area. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Morris, I think you're indicating again, would you like to come back? Could we unmute Councillor Morris, please? Thank you. If I can just start by saying that the, the claims that um, this will get children off of the streets, are, I think are highly unlikely. There's lots of things going on for them to do. They choose to stay on the streets, not do them. But apart from that, I want to I want to ask a question about cyclists. Is there a route for people coming to this? by cycle that does not involve going through that gyratory system uh, i'm just going to hand you over to mrs lyons yeah thank you um adele have you got the um the plan up that showed the um was there a, did you have a, oh, am I up? Oh, yes, um, is there a plan that shows the, um, the cycle, the, the route into the site? 
from it was um the plan that showed the sustainable routes and that they had like two cycle routes showing on it because um, the work they've the work they've done to the um that's that's been taken to cherry down has now taken away the um the crossings um have improved the surface crossings to the station and then from the station you are there's a new toucan crossing then being put in um for for access there so councillor morris i i would say that to get to that site from the town center so most of the most of the um the cycle routes that we've got get to the town center the ability to get from the town center to this site i would say would be safe and secure so therefore i would say there is a safe cycle route to this site that has been then improved by the new Toucan Crossing, which is a requirement for this for this planning consent, um, should it be approved. So therefore, I would say there is a safe cycle route to this site. Um, can I just pick up a point that Councillor Rimmer said? Um, that um, you're quite right, Councillor Rimmer, and I think we have a, we are we have missed a point here with regard to electric charging, and um, I would say that um, Condition 17 does need amending to add in a passive cycle charging point for the minibus parking place because obviously overnight that could be charged um, in future should they have it so you are quite right we should require even though it's not a requirement of of a, of a development of this size with this number of car parking spaces i think a passive um, charging point we should be requesting as part of a, that condition so we need to amend condition 6 17 to add in the requirement for a passive um, charging point because um, you're quite right Council Rimmer, we should be promoting that where we can on all developments. Um, so we can add that as additional condition. Um, I think that in terms of condition 21, in terms of cycle, cycling, and Council Morris, your point as well, I think um, that we'll. The, um, the information indication we got from on site was 16 car, um, cycle spaces is what they normally start off with. And I think the cycle management plan for um, to be reviewed at six months of operational use will give us the ability to then look at that process. Um, and then that also that look at the quali um, what that cycle parking looks like as well at that point. So I think condition 21 with the amendments that, that I've suggested would be adequate at the moment to deal with that point. Okay. So sorry, Councillor Morris. Sorry. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Right. Does any other councillor wish to make a planning point at this stage? No, I mean, what I would say is, you know, tonight we've had some things that are planning things that we've discussed, whether it's a parking, whether it's a safety, all of which are covered in this report. We need to bear in mind that when it comes to the safety of those young people there, that that is part of the planning application. The Essex Highways have looked at this and felt that it is a safe way of getting in and out of that site, that there is no... Um, issues when it comes to the parking. This is a sustainable site. It does meet the legislation. When you think about the design of this building, a great sympathy and care has been taken to make it not just be a building that could be plonked anywhere, but a, but a building that reflects, like it says in the report, the history and the heritage of the new town. And that great care has been taken to ensure that this is a sympathetic building that has good design. All of things that need to be considered. MPPF, we all know, says that we need to give waiting for um, community services, which this is. I feel that on every point that we need to discuss tonight, which are planning matters, um, that this report has covered that. And therefore, I do not have any objections on planning grounds to this whatsoever. We can all continue to have the conversation about whether or not Basildon needs, deserves, wants a youth zone. That is operational. That is something that has been debated and discussed uh, Councillor Harrison's committee, whether that's the fact that people might not be able to get into the town centre from there. Many of you know my family live in Carlisle, Carlisle's youth zone. Um, Carlisle as a borough is very similar to ours, extremely rural areas compared to the town centre. And on site have been able to overcome those issues through operational matters. But again, that is an operational matter. It is not a planning consideration. We're being asked tonight to decide whether or not the application before us meets planning legislation. And if the answer to that is yes, then as councillors, we should be voting for this. If the answer to that is no, then you will vote against. And obviously you need to weigh up those points. Um, with that, um, councillors, I'd like us to be unmuted, please, so we can take this to the vote. And I will start with Councillor McGeorge, please. In favour. Thank you. Councillor Morris. 
against. Councillor Turner. Yeah, on planning grounds against. Councillor yeah, Rimmer. Councillor Rimmer. Councillor Kettle. Did you hear Councillor Kettle? No. Councillor Kettle, could you just unmute yourself, please? Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, uh, how do you uh, vote? In favour. Thank you. Councillor Edderon? In favour. And I vote in favour. <coughs> with that planning application, with the conditions and the addendums that have been made tonight, has received planning um, conditional planning permission. We'll now move on to item agenda five. I believe that's Charles. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, this is um, just a, a February update in respect of uh, planning appeals um, and uh, enforcement appeals and enforcement notices served. So this is um, a, a report for members to note. If they have uh, any questions or comments, they're, they're welcome to, to contact me. Thank you. Um, Councillor Rimmer, you seem to be indicating. Do you have a point to make on on the um, report that Mr Sweeney's just given us? Yes, I do. Yes, it was. Okay. Um, it's, it's more of a question, really, because obviously we, we're getting the raw data on this, and it was just um, I wanted to know um, how effective we're being in terms if, if we could have a report on how effective we are being in terms of enforcement actions and how effective we are in defending appeals. If, if there could be a report on that at some point. Yeah, certainly. I, th I think um, we do quarterly reports uh, on enforcement uh, activity and appeals. Oh. Um, so um, I'll, I'll find out when the next one's due uh, and, and let members know. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see any other councillors indicating. So with that, thank you for your attendance tonight and um, we'll see you again at our next planning meeting. Thank you.